Nikola and ChargePoint have announced a partnership that will see ChargePoint build out a comprehensive network of charging stations for Nikola's commercial EVs. This is big news for the commercial EV market, and it's yet another sign that the EV revolution is gathering steam. Listen up for more details about this exciting partnership, this and more in today's video. Starting us off, Nikola ChargePoint to boost charging infrastructure for commercial EVs. Nikola Corp, a company that makes electric trucks, said on Tuesday that it will work with charging company ChargePoint Holdings to speed up the installation of the infrastructure needed for commercial electric vehicles. Many fleet owners want to use more electric vehicles because they want to cut down on carbon emissions and meet sustainability goals. But the lack of the right infrastructure has kept them from doing so. Nikola said that if it can use ChargePoint's products, it will be able to speed up the time it takes to build infrastructure projects that will help its customers charge their vehicles plan their schedules, and speed up their delivery routes. The companies, however, didn't want to talk about the partnership's finances. The deal was announced a week after Nikola said that it was hard to build more charging stations for fleets because end customers didn't want to pay money for the development. Nikola thinks that these problems will keep happening and will make it harder for people to buy its tray battery electric semi-truck. It said that the company wouldn't meet its goal of selling at least 300 cars this year, and it didn't make any new predictions. It said that macroeconomic uncertainty made it hard to see the company's future. Nikola, which is based in Phoenix, Arizona, has ordered ChargePoint's e-skids, which are a fast-charging solution. Nikola expects to start getting the e-skids as soon as this month. In March this year, Volvo and ChargePoint announced plans to build EV charging stations at Starbucks in five states. In the not-so-distant future, you'll be able to sip coffee while your electric car drinks electrons. This is because Volvo is working with ChargePoint to set up an EV charging network at Starbucks locations in five U.S. states. The companies plan to put in 15 DC fast charging stations at Starbucks along a 1,350 mile route that goes from Seattle to Denver. So there will be a total of 60 chargers. They will also have Volvo's logo on them, making it, along with Tesla's supercharger network, one of the few EV charging stations in the U.S. with a logo from a car company. The company said that all of the chargers will be set up by the end of 20. 2022. Volvo EV owners can use the chargers for free, but people who don't own a Volvo will have to pay. Volvo uses a variety of chargers from ChargePoint, including the Express Plus and Express 250. The Express Plus can deliver up to 350 kilowatts of power, while the Express 250 can deliver up to 250 kilowatts. Volvo says it can boost the power of one of its C40 recharge crossovers from 20% to 90% in 40 minutes. The spokesperson also wouldn't say how much Volvo was putting into the project. DC fast chargers, which can put out anywhere from 50 kilowatts to more than 350 kilowatts of power, are some of the most expensive to install. A public level 2 charger, which is what most charge point chargers in the US are, might cost $2,000 out of the box. But a DC fast charger with 150 kilowatts or more can cost between $100,000 and $250,000. Charging an electric vehicle is much different from refueling a gas car. Putting gas in a car can take less than five minutes, but recharging an electric vehicle's battery can take hours, depending on how much power the charger puts out. Because of this, Volvo and ChargePoint put their chargers at Starbucks. It's a way of letting EV owners know that they might rather wait in a coffee shop with a latte than in their cars. There have been similar ideas from other automakers. Volkswagen owns the company Electrify America, which makes chargers for electric vehicles. Many of its chargers are put in the parking lot of big box stores like Walmart and Target, and in 2018, Tesla sent in plans to build a huge supercharger station with 62 spots, a restaurant, and a movie theater in Santa Monica. In the United States, there are about 41,000 public charging stations with more than 100,000 plugs. But for many EV owners, it can be a bit of a hunt to find one that works or isn't locked up in a gated parking garage. People who don't own a Tesla have a hard time finding a place to charge their car in the U.S. People have said that Tesla's supercharger network is easy to use and can charge quickly, but it seems like the opposite is true for almost everyone else. The Biden administration recently announced a five-year 
their $5 billion plan to fix the country's patchy electric vehicle charging network. The plan will use funds that were approved as part of the bipartisan infrastructure law signed last year. Next, earlier on, EV maker Nikola announced it was to miss annual delivery target for semi-trucks. Nikola Corp and KLA.O, which makes electric vehicles, said it won't meet its goal of delivering at least 300 semi-trucks this year. It also said it wouldn't make any new predictions because companies are cutting back on spending because borrowing costs are going up. This caused its shares to drop by 3% on Thursday. This year, the company was supposed to deliver between 300 and 500 tray battery electric vehicles by taking advantage of the fact that logistics companies are switching to electric trucks to cut costs and meet environmental goals. In a conference call with analysts after the end of its third quarter, Nikola executives said that the company would not give forecasts for the fourth quarter or the whole year. So far this year, the company has sold 111 trucks and made 125 units. It made 75 tray battery electric trucks in the third quarter, but only delivered 63 of them. Visible Alpha says that analysts thought it would make 70 units. The bad news about deliveries comes as the company that makes electric trucks looks to use the recently passed Inflation Reduction Act to cut costs in its manufacturing and hydrogen energy businesses. According to data from Refinitiv, it made $24.2 million in sales in the third quarter, which was more than the $22.1 million that was expected. Without those things, Nikola had a lower adjusted loss of $0.28 cents per share, which was less than $0.39 cents that was expected. Shares of the Phoenix, Arizona-based company, which were up more than 11% when trading started, dropped to $3.20, down 3%. Finally, EV startup Arrival raises going concern risk, warns of job cuts in UK. Arrival SA, a company that makes electric cars, said on Tuesday that it might not have enough money to stay in business by the end of next year. This caused its US-listed shares to drop 33.2%. The company said it was looking into ways to deal with the lack of money and hinted at cost cuts that could have a big effect on its employees in the UK. Arrival's move to right size comes as the company shifts its focus to the larger US market, with the Inflation Reduction Act's incentives in mind. EV startups that promise to shake up the auto industry with new ways of making things and new products are struggling to keep costs down because of the problems with their supply chains and rising prices for raw materials. Quote, we're actively trying to raise money, said Chief Financial Officer John Wozniak on a call after earnings. We've had some preliminary talks with a few people. Given the state of the economy as a whole, he said it would take about six months for the money to come through. The company lost more money in the third quarter, but it thinks it will have enough cash to keep running until the third quarter of next year. We will use cash on hand of $330 million and look to secure new funds to achieve our goal in the United States, said Chief Executive Dennis Sverdlov. United Parcel Service gave the company an order for 10,000 electric vans in 2020 with the option to order another 10,000 vans. In the third quarter, Arrival's net loss grew from $30.6 million a year earlier to $310.3 million. The price of the company's shares was at a record low of $0.36. Cents. Arrival was going to focus on the U.S. market in the beginning to keep costs down. Arrival SA said it would reorganize its business to focus on the U.S. market. The electric vehicle startup wants to take advantage of incentives from the Inflation Reduction Act and a bigger market it can sell to. Some vans were still made in the British company's factory in Bychester, but the company said that expanding operations would require a lot of money, so it'll focus on the U.S. market. Arrival shares traded in the U.S. went up 5.1% to $0.74 cents after the company said it plans to right-size the organization and cut cash-intensive activities. This could have a sizable impact on its global workforce, mostly in the UK. Well, unfortunately, guys, that is all the time we have for you today. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, cheers.